Oh, this is going to be juicy, folks. Really, really juicy. I'm talking about the Breonna Taylor case. And I'm doing this video not to make a name for myself or create controversy. I'm doing this video because the truth needs to get out there. And first and foremost, all the credit needs to go to Brandon Tatum and his channel here on YouTube and his website, The Tatum Report, because he received this report from somebody who was involved in this investigation. And everything in this report is 100% true, 100% accurate. So once again, a shout out to Brandon Tatum in his channel here on YouTube and to his website, thetatumreport.com, that did receive this report from a source that was involved in this investigation. Now, I'm going to focus on the phone conversations in this report. Because if you want to know anything about the Breonna Taylor case, it's all in the phone conversations. And folks, when you read this report, you read these phone conversations, it reads like a novel. Now, I'm going to do my best not to mention any phone numbers or home addresses, any case numbers. And if you do happen to see, let's say, a phone number or home address, now the phone numbers should all be redacted in this report. But if you do happen to see any of that, please do not write it down. Do not share it with anybody. I'm just trying to get this information out there because this needs to be made known to the public. BLM and Tifa need to read this report before they go and burn down another city. And the mainstream media needs to read this report. And shame on the mainstream media for not doing their job and investigating what really happened in the Breonna Taylor case. So we have to go back to December of 2016. And they have the date here is 12-3-2016. When the LMPD homicide unit, I'm reading from the report here. The LMPD homicide unit learned that the vehicle that their most recent victim, Fernandez Bowman, was found in was a rental and had been rented by Breonna Taylor with an address of such and such. At approximately 0530 hours, two detectives went to Ms. Taylor's address to conduct an interview regarding any knowledge she may have had that would have been relevant to the homicide investigation. Upon contact with Ms. Taylor, detectives observed a male in the apartment with her identified as Jamarcus Glover. Keep that name in mind because we're going to talk about three people in these phone conversations, primarily three people, Jamarcus Glover, Brianna Taylor, and Kenneth Walker. Now, Ms. Taylor said that she did not know the victim and that she found out what had possibly happened from her boyfriend, Jamarcus Glover. Ms. Taylor stated that she had been dating Jamarcus Glover for approximately three to four months and that she did allow him to drive her rental car. There is a footnote here. I need to point this out. Important to note that the homicide victim is the brother of Demarius Bowman, which is one of Jamarcus, brothers, uh, Jamarcus Glover's associates, and had been arrested with Jamarcus Glover numerous times. You know, it would be really easy if parents would name their kids with simple names, uh, give these, their, their, their kids simple names, wouldn't it? Just saying, on a side, just saying. But you should really go through this report. This all kind of gets in the weeds. But you're going to hear a phrase in this in these phone conversations called the trap. And that refers to the location that the authorities were or the authorities were uh, obser uh, observing or they uh, uh, had under surveillance because it's believed that there was narcotics trafficking going on at this address. And so it's referred to by these people in these phone conversations as the trap. Now, within an hour of authorities putting up a, a uh, street cam, 15 to 20 vehicles were seen going to and from this particular address known as the trap. So let's get into the phone conversations. And we're going to start on the 3rd of January, 2020 with Jamarcus Glover. Now keep in mind, he is calling from jail on a recorded line. And this is the conversation between Jamarcus Glover and Brianna Taylor. And I'm just going to read as they have here. And I will try to clean up the language here for you. Jay Glover says to be Taylor, call Doug on Facebook and see where the blank Doug is at. He's got my F and money riding around in my MF and car. And he ain't even where he's supposed to be at. B. Taylor says to Jay Glover, you said Doug. Jay Glover says to B. Taylor, yeah, big Doug. B. Taylor says to Jay Glover, I'll call him. Why can't I find him on Facebook? What's his name on here? Jay Glover says to B. Taylor, whatever the name is. So then another phone call is made from Jay Glover. And of course, once again, these numbers are all redacted. She makes his, he makes his call to Brianna Taylor. 
from Booking, and this is at 1318 on the 3rd of January, 2020. Jay Glover says to B. Taylor, you talked to Doug? B. Taylor says to Jay Glover, yeah, I, I did. He said he was already back at the trap. Then I talked to him again just a minute ago to see if you had contacted him. They couldn't post bond till one. Jay Glover says to B. Taylor, just be on standby so you can come get me. Love you. B. Taylor says to Jay Glover, love you too. 1549, Jay Glover calls, number redacted again, Brianna Taylor from booking. Jay Glover says to B. Taylor, I'll come get some rest in your bed. B. Taylor says to Jay Glover, Jamarcus. Jay Glover says to B. Taylor, what, you don't want me in your bed? B. Taylor says to Jay Glover, I didn't say that. I haven't really been sleeping right either. I keep walking around every other hour type blank. Jay Glover says to B. Taylor, check it on me. I want you to know I appreciate it. B. Taylor says to Jay Glover, when you're around, I stress more because I just always be worried about you, not like you and blanks, but just period with the police and all that blank. So now you're getting the taste of what is going on here. Now, from the 1st of January 2016 to the 3rd of January 2020, Brianna Taylor's phone number, and this is in the report here, was called 48 times from jail. And it mentions that many of these calls are no longer available to listen to. And when the number is called from booking, does not provide an inmate's name. However, once the inmate's book is a, 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 once an inmate is booked and assigned to a dormitory, the system is able to track the inmate that is making the call. In the time frame referenced above, Jamarcus Glover called Brianna Taylor 26 times from a dormitory, and a male by the name of such and such, we're going to leave his name out here, called Brianna Taylor seven times from his dormitory. And this person has a conviction for possession of a controlled substance, cocaine in 2016, as well as a history. And this is this is kind of, uh, uh, th this, the, um, the screen here goes every so often, so I do apologize about that. So he has a conviction for possession of a controlled substance, cocaine 2016, as, as well as a history of other felony convictions per court net. So let's go to another phone conversation. And you flip to this, you'll see these surveillance photos. Now, this is a call that was made from Jamarcus Glover on the 13th of March, 2020. And he is calling a baby's mama, I guess if that's what you want to call it. So there is another person involved here. I'm going to try to leave their name out of this. Like I said, the three people I want to focus on are Jamarcus Glover, Brianna Taylor, and Kenneth Walker. So Jay Glover calls this person and says here in parentheses, child's mother from booking. And this person says to Jay Glover, Chop, that girl got killed over you. Jay Glover says to, Kay, to that person, Why would you say that blank over me, though? All my mail and blank. My mail and blank. It ain't got nothing to do with Bray's house. Then this person says to Jay Glover, But no, remember you had that bank statement in that other box and you leave that blank behind for them to hit your house and that putting two and two together. Come on, Chop, the way you move, period. Jay Glover says to this person, Dude, I told, dude, I do told me I just seen you leave your baby mama house you know it would be really nice if people learn how to talk proper english i mean you, you talk about ghetto this is i'm sorry folks when i read this it reads like a novel but it reads straight ghetto i i, I feel bad for these people i really do i really do how how do you get yourself in this type of position i don't understand it I, why would you get yourself involved in narcotics trafficking or what have you just just on a side note here so once again, Jake Glover says to this person, dude told me I just seen you leave your baby mama's house. And this person says to Jake Glover, they know where we live at. Or it's a question she asked. Uh, it is a female he's talking to, but he, 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 uh, she asked the question, they know where we live at. And Jake Glover says, Kira, we have been knowing where we live at. And this person says to Jake Glover, that's what they find out when they got an investigation on a blank. They're going to find out everything. And Jay Glover says to this person, at the end of the day, it's all BS. It's some sugar for some spaghetti we ate. This is verbatim, folks. This is verbatim. So this conversation goes on and on. And then at 11.30 on this date, once again, I'll go back to the date again, make sure we have that correct here. Uh, on the date of 3-13-2020, this is part of the conversation that's really, really important to pay attention to. Uh, attention to. This is... One of the phone calls that was made on the date at 11.30. Jay Glover calls this uh, baby's mama uh, from his dormitory. And as soon as she answers the phone, Jay Glover tell, tells her to call Damo. And the line then goes dead for a bit or sign for a bit. 
This person comes back on the line and says, Chop, he's on there. Jay Glover says to the unknown male, What up, Damo? Kenneth just got got her killed blank sitting in this jail like it's all good, like he's straight, like it ain't his fault. And this person says to Jay Glover, So he the one shooting the gun? Jay Glover said to this person, Yeah, he shoots at the police. They shoot back, Bray in the hallway, and she gets killed. Then that person, known as Tom, that person gets off the phone. And then the lady comes back on. She says to Jay Glover, They searched that Crown Vic. You had 20,000 in that Crown Vic. That's a question. Jay Glover says to this person, Hell, hell no, nah, hell no. Nah. I ain't been in that Crown Vic. And that person says to Jay Glover, That's where you've been hiding blank. You, where your money at? Jay Glover says to, to uh, that person, I was in the house. Here's the, the, the address. I'm not going to give that out. They found that blank outside. So what you need to know about that, that's referring to a royal crown bag that was found in a tree that had some drug paraphernalia in it, money, and a canine dog found that. And they also found, the, the authorities found scales, drug paraphernalia in the house in this place known as the trap, as well as uh, some other goodies. And it seems that Brianna Taylor was, I guess you'd say, maybe a go-between. And she was keeping quite a bit of money in her house as well, I think up to $8,000. So this kind of gets in the way. Here, here's this part. This is a call that was made. I'm trying to see if this is on the same day because there was numerous calls made on, uh, on, on, on one particular day. And I believe it goes back to... Uh, yeah, 313. This is when most of the calls were made on 313, it looks like. So here is this portion here that happened at 1307, where Jake Lever calls the baby mama again. That's what I'm going to refer to this person as, from his dormitory. And she says to Jake Lever, so where your money at? And Jake Lever says to this person, where my money at? Bray had like 8,000. And she says to Jake Lever, Bray had 8,000 of your money as a question. Jay Glover said to this person, yeah. And Jay Glover says to an unknown male that joined the call, tell cuz Bray got down like 15 grand. She had the eight grand I gave her the other day and she picked up another six grand. So what was Brianna Taylor doing? I'm reading you verbatim from these phone conversations. Now keep in mind, Jamarcus Glover is calling from jail on a recorded line. So this is word for word. They've got every single word that he said. And this is what's being said in these conversations. This is the truth of what was going on. And later as you, or as you read, or read further into this, he tried to use Breonna Taylor as a human shield when the police came and knocked him. And yes, they did knock and announce, and they did have a warrant issued by a judge for a narcotics charge. I talked about that in a previous video. So, Pardon me if I've kind of stumbled through some of these um, some uh, some of these conversations here, but I thought this information needs to get out there, and I hope you enjoyed the video. And this is not a video I'm trying to do, like I said, to get my name out there, start controversy. I'm doing this because the truth needs to get out there, and this is was was what was actually said between these parties. So you have Demarcus Glover making all these calls on a recorded line from jail from his dormitory. You have Brianna Taylor. You have these uh, this other lady involved. It's quote unquote baby mama. This place known as the trap. This is where all this stuff is going down. Where they're selling these narcotics. Apparently, they're under surveillance. And and within an hour of putting the street cam up, you've got fifteen to twenty cars that are coming up to this address, leaving. So there was a lot more going on to this than this poor woman being killed, being being shot and killed by the police. And as it turns out, as I said in a previous video. It was her boyfriend or the person she was with in the apartment who shot first. And then the police returned fire. One of the officers being shot in the leg, etc., etc. So if you did enjoy the video, please click that like button, subscribe, hit me up on Instagram and hashtag Jason Composes. Leave comments below. You can also reach me at Voice of the Composer at Twitter. So this is Voice of the Composer saying peace out. I'll catch you next time. Stay safe, everybody. God bless us a great country. And let's get the truth out there. Let's get the truth out there because it's not right that we've got groups like BLM and Artifa going out there and burning things to the ground. They're burning things to the ground and they don't know one thing about this case. And all they had to do was go to the TatumReport.com and see this for themselves.
So thank you for being with me. And once again, shout out to Brandon Tatum and his channel and to the TatumReport.com for, for posting this. Uh, and uh, I don't want to say I've necessarily enjoyed this video, but I wanted to get this information out there because this needs to be known to the public. So thanks for being with me. Once again, Voice of the Composer, saying peace out. I'll catch you next time.